the bag lady. The bag lady. Okay, so she, we all know the bag lady. She got a whole bunch of bags and she's carrying this whole load by herself. Now, I don't know about you, and I laugh at myself still to this day and moment that I will get up out of my car No, I got a lot of bags and I will still choose. Y'all, I will still choose. I gotta be able to see. (laughs) I gotta be able to see the comments. I will still choose to grab all those grocery bags and go in for one trip. And I'm like, Angel, you don't have to put yourself through this. Why are you putting your body through this stress? Yes, you could carry most of these bags, but do you have to carry all of the bags? No. And so to the woman listening, who feels like a bag lady think about it a bag lady doesn't just start off with a whole bunch of bags she starts picking up bags throughout her day throughout her journey of life she picks up one bag from this store she picks up another bag from this friend she grabs another another duffel bag from this family member all of the bags all of the bags all of the bags i don't know what kind of bags you're carrying today but god is saying put down the bags put down the bags press through and touch the hem of my garment and you shall be restored, whether that's in your mind, whether that's in your will, whether it's in your emotions, whether it's in your body, whether it's in your place of um, purpose, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your school, whether it's in your own family, whatever it is, put down the bags. And those bags would be labeled so many different things. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a very visual person. So if you want to do this activity, I feel like I'm about to do this activity like when I get a moment at the studio because that's where I'm going right now. Get a piece of paper, draw yourself. It does not have to be spectacular. This is just for you and the Lord. Draw yourself and draw yourself carrying, like you could do a stick figure holding bags. And I want you to label every bag that you're carrying. Draw the little circle, put the label on it. The bags don't have to be cute. It could be squares, it could be circles, it could be lumps, it could be odd shapes, whatever it is. Write out every single bag that you're carrying and ask the Lord, God, these are all the bags I'm carrying. I don't want to be a bag lady no more. Thank you, God, for that revelation. I don't want to be a bag lady no more. I don't want to be a bag lady no more. I don't want to try to do it all in one trip. I'm tired of doing it all by myself. I'm tired of always trying to hold everybody's load up when I got my own things going on. You don't got to be the bag lady no more. All that stress, like even think about it. Unforgiveness the neck. You feel it all up in your neck, your upper back, bitterness. You feel all these things in your body, in your stomach. When you're carrying a whole bunch of bags, when that load is heavy, girl, you cannot operate. You cannot operate like that. Your hands are too full and you got to let some things go. And I don't know what those some things are. You know, hence why I said label them bags. But girl, time to put down them bags and go back to your father loves you, who's designed you to do beautiful and marvelous things, just put it down. No one, and this is something I feel like is so freeing to hear, no one cares more about your life than God. Your mother does not care more about your life. Your father doesn't care more about your life. Whoever your guardian was growing up does not care more about your life and where it's going. Your friends don't care. Nobody cares more than God and you yourself. And if you're feeling like you don't want to do certain things because you're like, oh, this person's watching it. What if this person says that? Or what if somebody says this? Let go of that bag. Because one, you are not designed to please people. Two, you cannot live up to the expectations of man. Like literally you will fall and fail each and every day. I don't know who's like who feels like they're a bag lady. If you feel like you're a bag lady, put the number one in the chat. Put the number one in the comments. Whatever it is. Or not even that. Put the shopping bag emoji. Because then the girls will get it. But nonetheless, whatever it is that you feel like you're carrying, drop it. Just drop it like it's hot and walk back to the Father. Just walk back to the Father. And you can walk down crying you can walk down with your hands up whatever you do just return back to him and submit back to him and whatever that submission looks like do that i can't tell you how to be submitted to the lord because we all live different lives maybe your submission is to to carve out time for him maybe your submission is 
releasing certain activities that you're so used to doing that you know you shouldn't be doing. Whatever it is, submit back to God and start reading your word. Y'all, the word of God is the sword, okay? The more and more I grow, God is reminding me. There was a season of my life, this, this is before I had my license. This is when I was working at a coffee shop. I would be on the train. I would be on the bus. I would be walking down the street my face was in my Bible, not a phone Bible. My face was in my Bible. And when I think about it, I'm like, God, you was giving me tools and help, like sharpening my sword as a young woman walking through. I posted on my Instagram stories the other day. I was like, I was, I was what? A high school student when I first started going to my church. Didn't really know much about Jesus. I grew up, um, ah, there's a huge truck next to me, but he was coming in hot, y'all. <laughs> it was coming in hot. Um, but I didn't grow up in church. I grew up in a household that believed in God. But it was it was different. Um, I remember when I started going to church, I went to church because I was a part of this dance community. In particularly, in particular, specifically, prompt community. And we started going to this church, my church. Um... And then staying, some of us would stay for the youth service on Fridays because they opened up space for us to just be us. You know, they didn't judge us. They didn't, nothing. They just opened up their doors for us. And when I think about it, it's just like, God, that's what you do for us. You open up your doors for us. Fast forward, stop going to church. My father passed away. Something told me, not something. The Holy Spirit was like, come on home. Went to church. God gave me two amazing godparents. I kept walking with him, also walking in the world, dibble and dabbling, because y'all know how it is. And then one day I decided I was going to be legit. Like, I was in a season of my life where I was playing house with no title. Wasn't homeboy's girlfriend, nothing. For about two, I want to say two years, just playing house. Just playing house. Kept it from everybody. The only people that I knew was, like, my mother, because clearly I wasn't home all the things dropped it like it's hot submitted to god i said god i surrender within i want to say a uh, a few months and then maybe a year after all of that got married what and out of that got recognized at my church as a deacon because i was so on fire and i'm still on so much fire when it comes to the lord like God can change your life so quick, like it will make your head spin. But you gotta trust him. The woman who pressed through and touched Jesus's garment, she was so desperate for him. She did not care in that time when you study your word with the woman with the issue of blood. And you know what I love? If you watch this series, The Chosen, it shows a beautiful, if I could bootleg it and put it on YouTube, I would. And I think I might, <laughs> just for the girls, so y'all can really see. But if you saw how they illustrated this woman touching the hem of the garment, you have to remember back then when a woman had her period or if she was bleeding, because there are some women that are continuously bleeding. I know some women that are continuously bleeding and they do not know why. Can you imagine in that time, you could not be around people. You couldn't be around people because you were deemed unclean and they didn't have tampons and they didn't have pads and they didn't have um menstrual cups or anything like that so you had to be creative whether it's wrapping up with a whole bunch of fabric and all the things like could you imagine being deemed unclean and then nobody would touch you nobody would talk to you people would walk away from you as like as if you were a leper or some sort and you were so desperate because you were like, God, I'm tired of this pain. Not only the pain in my body, but this pain as far as loneliness. That pain alone is so hard to bear. If that's one of your bags, baby, write it down. Because God never made us to be isolated and alone. I strongly believe that when, when the enemy wants to get you and really get you, he will isolate you. He'll remove people from you. He'll make you put up walls so people don't come and talk to you and speak life over you to get you isolated, isolated and alone. 
my goodness, I'm telling you, I don't know who needed to hear this this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you are watching this replay, but girl, God loves you so much. He, he wants the relationship with you more than you want the relationship with him. He created you for such a time as this, and he wants you to live out the purpose that he has for you. His plans are to prosper you. They're not to harm you. Like, if you could even look through the word of God and look at the promises that he has for us, you'd be like, what? Like, God, you, you, you love me like that? Like, you love me like that, like that? Like, that's a different type of love. A whole different type of love. Let me make sure I, I have to make sure the camera's still good. But, hey, precious. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all need sometimes that reminder. Like, God, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. And I want to just be with you. And so, Write out your bags. Like, I really think that's such a beautiful exercise to do as an adult. Draw a stick figure woman. Draw her arms out nice and long. Draw her arms out nice and long. And draw every bag that she's carrying. Because I think when you start to actually see what that looks like, you'd be like, okay. And then also draw a woman holding bags of the things that you desire. Because... As God elevates you and brings you into the other season, you'll be able to carry a different type of load. Oh my gosh, that is so good. That is so good. In this season, you're carrying a load that you can't handle. Like you cannot physically, you can't physically carry this load. And God's like, give me these bags. Please give me these bags, woman. And then he's going to replace those bags with bags that you can carry like peace and joy and gladness and um like all the things prosperity virtue trust oh that is so beautiful because god knows what we could carry and in what seasons we could carry it in. like there might be a day or a season where god's like uh-uh i don't need you carrying three bags i just need you to carry this one backpack uh-uh, I don't need you carrying the backpack today. I need you to carry this duffel bag. Uh-uh, I don't want you carrying the duffel bag. I want you to carry one of those teeny tiny little purses that you can only put one Tic Tac in. Like, that's our type of God. He knows what we can carry. He knows what we can bear. And he knows what we need and what season we need it in. And so if you just trust him, press through the crowd, whatever that crowd looks like, and touch his garment, and just get back to whatever it is when it comes to being at the feet of Jesus, I promise you, it doesn't take that long. Be in, a, be in a space of prayer and fasting and reading the word. Y'all, I recognize how distracting social media and Netflix could be. There are certain things that you can start implementing in your daily life so you could just have the, the bandwidth to focus, whether it's no TVs in your bedroom, charging your phone in your hallway, um, having a cutoff time where it's like after a certain time, you're either reading a book or reading your word or journaling or doing just different things because... We don't have, we don't know how much time we are assigned here on earth. And there are people who are dying, who need to hear your story, who need to hear what you've come out from. If I told you the number of women and girls who have reached out to me and they're like, Angel, thank you for sharing your story. Angel, thank you for encouraging me. Thank you. Like, and it's not for me. This is me. God, you, you get all of that glory. What? If y'all only knew the things I have seen in my life and the things I've went through, I I am far, far from perfect. I am far from even, from, from whatever pedestal people like to put people on. I am far from that and nor do I want that. This is me, God. If I could just open my mouth and you feel it. You're talking about a girl who feels like she doesn't have the best vocabulary. A girl who sometimes stutter. A girl who says up all the time. A girl who, who, I mean, y'all, if God can fill my mouth, imagine when he fills yours. Like, imagine when he fills yours. I mean, God is so good. I want to pray for y'all. I want to pray for y'all right now. God, I thank you so much for my sisters on this chat, on this live, on this replay, God. I thank you, God, so, 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 so much for them. 
God, I thank you for their life. I thank you for all the things you brought them out of, God. I thank you, God, for hearing that prayer of that woman that's deep down in her heart, the one that she can't even utter out her mouth because her faith is so low right now, God. God, I ask that you would just forgive us. Forgive us for our sins, God. Forgive us for our doubt. Forgive us for not trusting you. Forgive us for putting expectation and bars up in the sky and saying that's your expectation for us, God. Forgive us for trying to have a mind to un to um to think that we know how you think, God. We can't even conceptualize, if that's even the word, Lord, what you think, oh God. We can only go based off the word of God. God, forgive us for our laziness. Forgive us for our poor stewardship, God. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us, God. We come back to you, God. We press through this morning. We press through this afternoon. We press through this this evening just to touch the hem of your garment, God. We say in this new month, God, of Tishri, God, that we're going to press forth. And not only that, God, but we're going to receive that promise that you highlighted also in this month, that we're going to be fruitful and multiply in whatever area that is, God, that you have for us, whether it's in uh, finances, whether that's in um, favor, God, whether it's in what ever it is in god we just believe that we are going to be fruitful and we're going to multiply in this season because you sent this for us god god that's an instruction you gave us god and so in this season god i'm praying for my sister i'm praying for this woman of god who's just who just feels like she's in her low point god she feels like she doesn't look like herself god she feels like that when every time she looks in the mirror she doesn't recognize the person looking back at her god god i pray that in this season that she'll just begin to study the word god she'll begin to study the word and really begin to build back who she is in your eyes god who you call her to be god how you call her to operate god and i pray right now god that you will give her a godly community of women god that will pour into her that will intercede for her that she'll be able to even do the same things for them god i pray right now god in this season that you will establish groups of women to be able to walk together as sisters as a sisterhood would god i pray right now god for the, that one woman who's listening and she's like girl i don't have any friends i don't have anyone to call on i don't have anyone to talk to god i pray that in this season that you will be her friend at a different level and so she could call you her best friend god you gave us holy spirit and you said we never have to walk this life alone we never have to walk this life alone. And God, in this season, while you're preparing her, um, the friends that you have for her, God, I pray that she'll she'll start to operate in her purpose, God. God, I know for a fact for myself, God, because I've seen the fruit of this, God, whenever I start to live in the purpose that you designed me for, you will start to send the people. You'll begin to send the resources. You begin to send everything that I need. I don't even have to ask sometimes, God, you just be sending it. And so, Lord, I pray in this season, this woman, she begins to just go and she just begins to start now, whatever it is that you've placed inside of her, God. I pray right now, God, that she will just begin to lean on you and trust you on a different capacity, God. I pray right now that she'll begin to let go all of resent, bitterness, unforgiveness, um, all heartache and pain, God. Whatever it is that has caused her heart to be callous and like a stony rock, God, I pray that you'll take your chisel and your hammer, God, and just break that rock off of her heart, God. Break that rock off of her heart, God. Break that rock right off of her heart, God. And I pray right now, God, that she'll start to declare over her heart and her mind that it is well, that she is well. She is well in her mental health. She is well in her physical health, that she is well, God, according to your word, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that she will just begin to just see herself the way you see her, God. And I pray that you begin to open up her eyes and her ears so she can hear you. I know there are seasons where we just feel like we don't know what you're saying, God. Like we literally cannot hear you. And sometimes when we say, hear you, we're like, what does that even mean, God, in this season? So, God, I'm speaking about that sister who's like, I don't even know if I actually truly heard God. I pray right now, God, that as she opens up your word and reads your word, that she will start to hear you and how you begin to speak to her, God. I pray right now, God, that you'll send the confirmation sign, whatever it is, God. And I'm not talking about no angel numbers, God. God, I'm not talking about no witchcraft, no horoscopes, no nothing like that, God. I'm talking about your divine signs and wonders, your miracle signs and numbers, God. I pray, and not numbers, God, your miracle signs and wonders, Lord. I, rebu I rebuke it. I pronounce it. Whatever it is that they have plunged 
onto that the world tried to teach them, whether it be about angel numbers or horoscopes or tarot cards or whatever witchcraft these social media people or friends have put into their air. God, I pray that you remove whatever it is, God. Remove it from the root. Take it out of them, God. Remove it. Blind it, God. I come against any spiritual eyes that are open that you did not want open for them, God. I pray that you'll shut it down now in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over them, God, that they will not have a double mind, God, that's leaning on one side and leaning on the other side, God, but they will have a mind that's set on you, oh God. You say in your word, a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. And so, Lord, if she has been operating with a double mind, God, I pray right now that you will cause her mind to be unified, God, according to your word and your will for her life, God. I pray right now, God, that you will free her from these thoughts that have kept her captive, oh God. I come against every single time someone asked her her birthday and tried to read her palms or read her life or read her birth chart or whatever it is, oh God. I come against now and I plead the blood of Jesus. Any um, false prophet or false person that tried to speak a, a word to her, God, not in your spirit, God. We cancel it now when we do not come into agreement with it, God. We cancel it. We send it right back to the pit of hell because we know the enemy got plans for us and we do not want to be in his plans. We pray right now, God, the hedge of protection, God, that only you can provide. We pray right now, God, that we just even need your finger, God, just like how you did in Exodus for the, the children of Israel who are in Egypt, God. You just had your finger, oh God, go, go against Pharaoh and the Egyptians, God. And so, God, we pray right now just for your finger to press against her enemies right now. We pray right now, God, for your finger to press against all those strongholds that are trying to keep her in bondage, God. I thank you, God, that you're releasing her now, that the chains are dropping now, God, so that way she could go walk, run to where you have for her, God. God, I come against the woman um, and those people who are monitoring spirits that are just watching her and trying to keep her bound. And they're asking her what's going on in her life, trying to get information off of her, but not to pray for her, but just to, to talk about her, to gossip about her, um, to tear her down with their words. Whatever it is, oh God, I pray right now that you begin to shut up the eyes of these monitoring, monitoring spirits, that you begin to plug up their ears and i pray that you begin to gouge it out god whatever it is whatever it is according to your word and your way god that you'll begin to blind them so they cannot have any foothold into your daughter's life god i pray lord that you just begin to um surround her just surround her surround her surround her surround her surround her god you are her strong tower god you are her mighty fortress god you said if if she's scared to run into her and run into you god just like how a father, if a father sees his child oh, afraid, God, you open your arms up for us to run into you, God. And so in this season, God, I pray that she runs into you, God. I come against every scale that's in her mind, oh God, that's unbalanced. I pray right now, God, that you'll remove the scales from her eyes, God, so that she can see clearly, God, whatever vision that has caused her to be blurred out, whatever word or whatever, um, Whatever desire of the flesh, and I'm not just talking about the body, God. You know exactly what I mean when I say the flesh, God. Whatever desire of the flesh that is not from you, God, that has caused her to be um, delayed, God, I pray that you'll cut it off of her now, God. In your word, God, it says, search my heart, God, and remove and pluck out every wicked thing, God. Pluck it out, Lord. Pluck it out, pluck it out, pluck it out. This is your daughter, God. You said that she's full of wisdom, that you called her your own, that she's beautiful and blessed. She's fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, God. When you breathe breath into her lungs, God, you deposited your spirit in her. And that's why Holy Spirit can reside in us, God. I pray in this season that she begins to take care of her temple better, God. Whatever that may look like, God, whether it's walking more, moving more, drinking more water, God, the, 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 the minimal things, God. She knows what it is, God. I pray right now that her temple is starting to be taken care of, God, because you're trying to remove some of these sicknesses and diseases that has been passed down through generation and generation, God. God, I pray against any um, evil altar that's set up against her, God. I plead the blood of Jesus over her right now, God, that whether it's from a family member, whether it's because of generations before her, or even a friend, God, whatever evil altar that has been marked up and set up to rise up against her, God, we take we take authority, God. We take authority now, and we know our place now, God. And we say, God, thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for dying and rising again. There is nothing, 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 nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus. And God, we render to that altar 
the blood of Jesus. And we pray, right, God, that you dismantle it and that is that it's broken down to the point where it is shattered and scattered, oh God, that it is not repairable, God, that it is broken, broken. We sever the cord now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now that in the next few days, my sister will be encouraged, that she will be renewed, that she will look back on today, that she will look back at the beginning of October and say, wow, Lord, you did that. You took my life and changed it all around, God. And I give you glory for that, Lord. And so, Lord, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We're no longer going to cry. We're no longer going to um, make excuses. We're no longer going to be that type of woman who who who's wishy-washy and doesn't know where she should stay or doesn't know where she should stand, God. I pray right now that she'll know who she is and she'll operate in it. And she'll stop apologizing for being herself. She'll stop dimming her light when she's in crowds. She'll stop um, shrinking in front of people, but she'll be able to stand tall with her shoulders back and trust and know that you called her and set her on assignment, God. God, I thank you that you qualify us before any man qualifies us, God. That you you anoint us before any man anoints, anoints us, God. And it's just that simple. It's just that simple, Lord. No one could prepare us better than you, God. And we thank you, God, for the people that help groom us and prepare us for different seasons of our life, God. But we know, ultimately, it always starts with you, God. If that person follows you, they're going straight out of your rule book. They're going straight out of um, what you call and what you say, Lord. And so for that, God, we just give you glory. We just give you glory, God. We just give you glory. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. We don't thank you enough, God. We say, oh, my God, all the time. But, God, we don't even say thank you, God, enough. God, help us to change how we speak. Instead of out of um, anger or frustration, when we say, OMG, God, let us say thank you, God. Instead of responding in ways that are upset and angry, God, let's just say thank you, God, because God, we're going to praise you when we're going through it and praise you when we're not. We're going to praise you when we're sad and praise you when we're happy. We're going to praise you when we're angry. We're going to praise you when we're full of joy. God, we're just going to praise you. We're going to change how we speak. We're not even going to, if we don't feel like we want to speak, we're going to just be silent, God. Whatever season it is that, that you have this woman in, whether it's to be loud like a lion or just to be be still like a lamb, God, I thank you, God, that we'll have control. We will have self-control according to your word, God, that this, this thing in our mouth will not just be going on. It will not be going on. I come against the spirit of gossip. God, as somebody that was delivered from gossiping and lying, God, I pray right now that you would just begin to shut our mouth up, God. God. As a girl who likes to talk, because you made me like this guy. Talking to my sisters who are a chatty catty too. God, keep our mouth shut. If we ain't got nothing to say, keep our mouth shut. We do not have to respond to everything, Lord. We do not have to respond to everything. We do not have to respond to everything. And so God, in this season, when there are conversations happening around us, when there are stories being said about us, instead of responding with our mouth to people, to people who are actually being operated as puppets because we all got some demons in us that need to be cast out and we thank you god for your deliverance but god when we are around these people and we hear and see these stories circulating help us to keep our mouths shut and help us to just go to our secret place put our face down and speak to you about it before we speak to our best friends, our sister, cousin, auntie, uncles, aunties, mothers, fathers, and whoever, before we speak to anybody, God, cause us to go to the secret place, to shut behind us, talk to you about it first. Let us not be a person, God, that's so reactive because emotions, God. Help us to have more emotional intelligence, God. Help us to know how to respond better God help us not to respond out of anger when it comes to stuff God help us Lord help us Lord help us Lord help us Lord God we are just little girls we are just little girls still trying to figure it out God we do not have you could be the most classy demure filled whatever woman God but at the end of the day you are God's daughter you are still a little girl and we are still trying to figure it out 
It doesn't matter how poised you are or how unpoised you are. God is going to be doing a character redevelopment in this season where he is going to start to chisel some things off of you. And God, we just give you praise for that. We thank you, God, that you will fine to a, fine tune us, oh God. You said every single person is a part of the body, God. Every single person is a tool that you can use. And so, God, I thank you in this season that you are fine tuning us, God. You are fine tuning us. You're repairing us. You're you're removing some things off of us, God. I thank you as a former bag lady that was carrying a weight that I did not and I was not created to carry God, I give you praise, honor, and glory that you have chiseled some things. You have cut the plastic bags off. You have ripped the paper bags off of me. You have even pulled off, excuse me, you have even pulled off um, the bags that I put on my chest, my back, even the head, Lord, the bags that we carry on our head. Oh my Lord, God, you are so good. Thank you, God, for this revelation. Thank you, God, for this revelation. Even the bags that we carry on our head. Oh, the weight of it has caused us to have our mind all over the place, God. Thank you, God, for just taking it off of it, taking it off of us, God. Thank you for removing that bag off of our head. Thank you, God, for removing the bag off of our head. And God, thank you, God, for even this revelation. All the times we, where we say we're chasing the bag, God, I thank you, God, that I don't got to chase no bag. I got to chase after you. I thank you, God, I don't have to chase after another bag and that I only have to chase after you. Now, that is a revelation right there, okay? All those people, myself included, who have said, yo, I have to get to the bag. I have to secure the bag. I have to chase this bag. I thank you, God, that I do not have to chase, secure, or go after no bag. I just got to go after you. And that alone, God, you get all of my praise because I don't have to be the bag lady chasing for more bags y'all don't hear me god they don't hear me god they don't hear me i don't gotta be that woman chasing more bags when my hands are already full and tired my little linguini arms lord beautiful dainty linguini arms don't need to be chasing after no other bag you said, seek me first. Oh, seek me first. Seek me first. Seek me first. And God, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to seek you first because everything else could be added after. I just want to seek you first in this season, Lord. And so, God, as I pray for my sister, God, I pray right now that she is encouraged this morning, afternoon or night, depending on where she's watching. The but God, I pray that she's encouraged. I pray that she is obedient and she does the drawing. She draws herself out and she labels every bag that she's carrying and draws another picture of her carrying different bags. And I thank you guys that she even reminded me of the photo that we would see on social media that would circulate every year of the woman walking up steps and she's carrying all these different things. And then when she crosses over a certain threshold, she's carrying new bags. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That you have given us this illustration at a different capacity. And God, you get the glory. You get the glory. I thank you, Lord. I give you so much praise. And I thank you, God, that you show us how much you love us, God. I thank you, God, that you show us how much you love us, God. And I pray right now, God, that the woman who is listening can rest her head tonight and know that she could just sleep peacefully in your presence and that she could dream again. And that she could move again. She could run again. She could go again, God. I thank you, God, for her life. I give you all the praise, honor, and glory for her, God. In Jesus' mighty name, God, I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is so good.